Okay. There's two types of mistakes. There's two types of my bad. There's two types of bad behavior. There's omissive sins. The word sin means missing the mark. There's omissive sins and there's things that you do, okay? There's a preacher out there that says, hey, when you get saved, you stop sinning. That's ridiculous. If you are hanging out in the house, watching funky, crazy movies, and you could be caring for a child that's longing for parents and family, if you are caught up in your own favorite behavior and you are not doing something that flows kindness and care out to the human family, which can be awful fun, it could be awesome fun, that's an omissive sin. That's wrong. It's basically selfishness or laziness or lack of best priorities. Two sins, omissive sin and commissive sin. Stuff that you do that's hurtful. Most people, when they want to get connected with God, they turn nicey-nice, okay? Uh-uh. That is not the game. The game is to actually be led by a spirit to do the things that are really wonderful for somebody else that nobody might have done for you. All right, now, Passover. Coming up, all right? I want to tell you something. Christianity is largely a joke, a farce. It's a mess because what's missing from Passover in the Messianic and in the Jewish, what's missing from Passover and what's missing from the Ecclesia, from the church gathering what's missing well we have a Passover Seder but ain't nobody telling you that the grandfathers of this cluster of families are listing the sins that have happened across the past year because he's saying it's my fault on my watch these sins sneaked into my family and then that sin list is being sent to the temple with a cute little lamb that the cluster of families have been caring for and that lamb is going to have its throat slit. He's going to be killed and all the children know that the lamb is going to be killed as an atonement for sin. And they tell the little lamb, I'm sorry but you have to die for our sins. I'm sorry but you have to die for our sins. If we don't sacrifice something, God's favor and forgiveness is not coming. Okay, that's the former covenant. Once a year, once a year is when the atonement for sin happens, and it happens in a home gathering of a cluster of families. There's no atonement for sin without the Passover Seder. That's how the sins are atoned for once a year and then the new covenant well at that once a year is when that guy is sitting on the ark of the covenant which has the ten commandments tablet aaron's rod that budded and a golden jar of manna that's been saved actually from the exodus that is what the guy's sitting on when he's interacting with God for the whole Israelite tribe and the whole world. 
So once a year, somebody goes in and sits down on the box. Now, shift to the new covenant. Glory, glory, glory. Shift to the new covenant. What do you got? What do you got? What is the new holy of holies? Where do we sit in God's presence? It's the communion. Okay, so what do these people have to do when they go into the temple in the former covenant? They have to take off their clothes, go into a giant bathtub, put different clothes on. There is a whole cleansing ritual, okay? So, in the new covenant, communion is the holy of holies. Nobody that's not baptized gets to even come in and see that atmosphere. Only people that are willing to die for Jesus today. And what's the first thing? Admit your faults. And in an ongoing way, describe the troubling spirits that are still messing with you after your salvation. Just like Paul in 2 Corinthians 12. This is not complicated. The word thorn means hook. That's what it means. Paul has a hook in his flesh. It's also mentioned in another place, do not allow Satan to have a stronghold, a hook, a clinging place, a grabbing on place. Do not allow dark spirits to have a grabbing on place. That's the term that he's, he's just using a different term. And none of these hotshot pastor people have ever gave, given a revelation to me for that. From my youth, there is a clinging place of a demon. Paul says, I have a clinging place in my formative years, in my flesh, from when I was a kid, that causes me to have an afflicting spirit. Does that spirit own me or control me? No. But in times when I'm weak, or when I'm confused, or when I'm stressed, that spirit is going to try to knock me off my game, afflict me. The word demonize means afflicted, har harassed. The actual word means clinging. So it's literally like a kitty cat holding on to your sweater. Clinging, demonized. It does not mean demon possession. That is one of the worst mistranslations in English. It does not imply that that spirit owns you. God is above everything. And if God wants to let you free, you'll be free in a second. Clinging, a clinging spirit. We have prepared one another for the cling, you know, by talking about the clinging spirits that we have experienced, that we are, that are still in our atmosphere, that are still in our atmosphere. Okay, glory, 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 glory. So therefore, be warned, because common Judaism and Christianity have the same problem. People do not come together and admit their faults. That's why I've been on this honesty guy kick for a long, long time. Come on, let's do something about this. Let's talk about all the topics that our children need to pop up and chit chat about. I feel like there's something wrong. When I went to this house, I just felt angry and I didn't know what it was. All of these things need to be common, Mr. Rogers, smooth avenues of discussion. Every type of problem for the human being must be in a conversational, kind, cheerful mode. Peace be with you.